morning. Thought I'd do some trailer voyagers, even though my fingers are sore from yesterday and Friday. My wrists are sore too. But I thought I'd do a little bit anyway, because it's been a while. Oh, life, it's bigger. It's bigger than you. You and not me. The lanes that I go to. The distance in your eyes. Oh no, I said too much. I said enough. It's me in the corner. It's me in the spotlight. Losing my religion. Trying to keep up with you And I don't know if I can do it Oh no, I said too much I said it up Thought that I heard you laughing Thought that I heard you sing I think I thought I saw you try Every whisper, every waking hour Choosing my confession Trying to keep my eye on you Like a hurt, lost, blinded fool Oh, no, I said too much I said enough I thought that I heard you laughing I thought that I heard you sing I think I thought I saw you try That was just a dream Oh, you try and cry You try and cry That was just a dream Just a dream Just a dream Consider this Consider this The hint of a sanction Consider this slip that brought me to my knees. Failed. What if all my these memories are flailing around? Now I've said too much. I thought that I heard you laughing. I thought that I heard you sing. I think I thought I saw you try But that was just a dream You try and cry, you try and cry That was just a dream Just a dream, just a dream Jackie and Kim. I haven't seen Kim in a long time. That's nice to see you here. Um, man. Well, hey, welcome to Trailer Boy Church on a quiet Sunday morning. My voice isn't super because I've been off playing, being myself. Um, summer season's my, it's a good time of year for me because it's when I get to get out and do the, uh, do my dance, right? So I was at the Friday, Friday night I was at the Rose City Book Pub. And I don't know, I don't remember where you're at, Jackie, but if you're a local, I think, for some reason I'm thinking you are, but maybe I get people's names and faces mixed up all the time. It's getting worse as I get older. Um, but I know Kim's local, and I play the Rose City Book Pub every other month. And um, 
So I know you and Ed are on my on my invite list. I'm pretty sure you are. So you're getting an event every so often. But um, so I had that, which is nice. That's kind of my my tribal show, right? All my people. We can have food. We can hang out. Um, but then Saturday morning, I hauled ass up to Longview for their farmers market, and that's a it's a four hour market. So it's three one hour sets of music for me, all told. And uh, so. So you put it all together and I did almost six hours of music in two days. Um, and so my voice, my fingers, my feet, my leg, my back, it's all saying, hey, Trevor boy, you're getting older. But I sang, I opened Trailer Boy Church this morning. Um, you know, all of this is kind of coming together. This has been a slow coming together of my business plan. Um, Trailer Boy Church is a part of my brand, as you will, but um, I'm gearing up to do uh, full, to shift this over from Facebook to YouTube. Now, what I'll probably do is have my YouTube things maybe post over to Facebook, but the things I do here on Facebook, I've kept pretty private to just my 3,000 friends, <clears throat> but I've all also been me uh, kind of just getting in, uh, comfortable in my skin with all of it because it's getting ready to go public. Um, and I'll do like a, probably a monthly public trailer boy church, or I might do like five or six in a row and they're going to be short, you know, they'll be 15 minute things, not the long 30 minute things that these are, but the goal will be to have a song, uh, and then a talk. And, um, one of the talks I'm going to give is actually, uh, it's on this, it's on amazing grace. And it's, cause if you don't know your, if you don't know the story of the song, of course I need to go back and I need to go make sure it's not apocryphal because a lot of the bullshit that I was given was apocryphal. But I think that I've gone back and scoped this out. The guy that wrote it uh, was, um, he was a slave trader who had a, a significant conversion experience, the likes of which he was very clear that he could not do what he was doing anymore. And I believe that he became an abolitionist. Uh, but he also wrote this song that we're... You know, it's universally kind of known in Christendom. Um, and of course, I, um, I'll sing it real quick. Oh, may the grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It's interesting, because when I first learned this song and used to sing it in churches as a young pastor and as a young pastor wannabe, I was all tangled up in my conviction of needing forgiveness for the sin nature that I was born with. So the whole direction of the song was about finding something outside of me. Thank you. Finding something outside of me that I could bring into me that would give me that grace, right? Um, and I had, I didn't have grace. I didn't have grace for anybody else either. If I didn't have grace for me, how could I have grace for them, right? So I was all tangled up in uh, I had some horrible beliefs that were reinforced, right, by the other pastors around me. Um, the the color problem, quote unquote, all these things, was really about a curse in Genesis. My father taught me that, right? There's a curse in Genesis where Noah's kids saw him naked and all black people everywhere cursed now. I was taught that at home, right? Um, so my sense of grace was all fucked up. Uh, and I didn't have any, and I was constantly on a rabbit wheel trying to find it, this hamster wheel trying, ah, gotta get some grace, gotta get some grace. And if I couldn't get it from the church, then I uh, was going to find it elsewhere. But where I needed to go was inside of myself to find it. And so, so that's the thing. So when I do Trailer Boy Church, I can do that. I can, because it's pointed toward, Trailer Boy Church is kind of pointed towards my former people, right? Um, I mean, they're still my people, but the Southern Baptists, the Evangelicals, where I came from, I'm... I'm a unique fellow to go back into that world because I've written 70 songs in that world. I can, I can still preach it, brother. I can still preach it, sister. I can still preach it, other. Everybody, uh, you know, it's got to be grace and good news for everyone. And if it isn't, then it's not good news for anyone. So if it's only good news for straight white old dudes, that's not good news. 
It is for them. It feels like it. But the fact is there's a wear and tear on your soul being a douchebag. Walking through life thinking you're being persecuted because you um, are standing up for your beliefs with your gigantic flag on the back of your pickup truck. Um, so anyway, so I opened this morning with um, what I was really going to talk about was losing my religion because the um, REM song. And I don't, you know, I talk a lot about the fact that I've had this long journey, long ass journey through Pentecostalism, fundamentalism, dispensationalism, um, walked the aisle to Billy Graham in 1983, uh, Bill Gothard's basic youth conflicts, focus on the family films in the fourth and fifth grade at the school with my parents, um, because James Dobson was a psychologist. We could have him in the schools. Oh, that's more dangerous than school prayer, man. But. All of that nonsense piled up on me. And then, I, you know, I was on this long terror of a journey. And over in West Germany, I became a Southern Baptist. I was going to a Southern Baptist church just a half a mile off base. I'd walk there on Sunday. I taught Sunday school. I preached sermons there. The pastors would take me under their wing. Uh, and one of the pastors there was a missionary to the Pacific Northwest. Because the Pacific Northwest was considered the mission field uh, of all the missions. It's close to home. It's affordable. Go live there. You can preach the word to the lost because they're eighty-five percent unchurched up in the Pacific Northwest. That's a problem. So that's anyway. I ended up got tangled up with him, and he introduced me to a whole bunch of people back here, and I ended up uh, becoming a Southern Baptist pastor. And while I was kind of building, getting my cred, you know, like a short story writer, you get your cred back selling those stories to the small press, and then the bigger press, and then all get a book deal. Well, in the ministry, it's kind of the same. Um, except that you, as a preacher, you're full, initially you're doing pulpit supply, which is uh, a preacher's going to go on vacation, need somebody to fill in for him. He calls the main office of the denominational association, and they'd be all like, oh, we got a young buck here. We got a list. We got a young fella here, Ken Scholes. He sings. He plays guitar. You might want to have him. He'll bless your church. So I go in and do that sort of thing all over the Northwest. Like I remember churches in Oregon. I think I did a couple in Canada. Churches all up and down. Uh, camps revivals. Uh, and then I got my own church up in Bellingham while I was finishing my degree. The plan was to go to seminary. And I was getting a degree in history because I liked history. Um, and it was changing me. Uh, I don't, I mean, college was changing me that, I mean, that would have probably been sufficient, but I was pastoring a church and I was preaching every Sunday and I was preaching all the all this other preaching. And I was kind of spending myself on that. And I had an epiphany that with all of the preaching that I had done, the folks that I was talking to, they were still just ugly to each other. There was just, it was just an ugliness undercurrent of a couple of the people there. Um, that old saying about bad apples in the bunch or whatever. And uh, there was just this ugliness, this ugh. And, um, and I, there was a day, it was November 14th, um, 19... 94 or three, 93, my heart just kind of broke in the pulpit and I just started to cry and I cried all day. And then I cried the next day and I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying. And I was just to the point of despair and despondency on the inside. And I remember thinking that it has to be better than this. It has to be better than this. At this point I had been at it for many, you know, several years and, um, and nobody, the people that I was talking to were not any better off and, and I didn't have any sense of any kind of grace. We just had to ask somebody to leave the church for being racist. And, um, and really he wasn't just racist. He was cognitively failing an old man with dementia, probably brought on from alcoholism, but I was too young to have seen that or extended any grace to him. I had no grace for myself. So how could I, how could I extend grace to another? Um, but anyway, that's. That's what happened, right? There was, that's me in the corner losing my religion. But what initially happened was not a losing of it. <clears throat> it was a loosening of my religion because I started letting go of the stuff that really didn't matter within it until eventually it was like peeling an onion. Um, the parts that I've kept, incidentally, are the parts that I think were the more valuable. Um, I, think that the, I think that Jesus was a remarkable person for what we know of him. The problem is when people say, oh, I knew Jesus. My Jesus action figure came with a gun, an American flag, 
and a Trump flag. That's my Jesus action figure. We got this American Jesus who's blue-eyed and white and long-haired and, hey, he looks kind of like me. They got the glasses. My children, I say unto you, love one another and drink delicious Major Dickinson flavored coffee after you've loved one another thoroughly. Anyway, hey, there's Keith, there's Janet. Good to see you all. So out of all of that, um, you know, my journey twisted, right? And I became less of an evangelical. I started therapy. I resigned the church. I ultimately became an Episcopalian on my way out the door. When Jen and I got married back in 2004, um, I was, she was an atheist and I was a book of common prayer. We used the book of common prayer for our vows. Um, and I don't think I identified as an atheist until maybe 2007. Now I consider myself an agnostic atheist. And, um, but anyway, Trailer Boy Church is going to hit on all that stuff when I start it up. I just don't know when I'm going to go live. Right now you all just get it here on, on uh, Facebook. But at some point I will have a Trailer Boy Church channel on YouTube. And it'll feed into what I'm doing out in the small towns in Oregon and Washington. Um, and then I'll start probably a Facilier Solutions line of talks on the same. I'm going to get Ken's goals all under one umbrella there on YouTube. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. This weekend I was out. The Longview gave out some cards. Don't know to what orgs. I just talk to people and tell them, you know, whatever you're looking for. If you need help, I can try to help. My volunteerism is, is consulting work with nonprofits and artisans who are trying to get on their feet and, and people who are trying to find their path after a dark patch, either in religion or whatever else. Most of what we know about this guy, Jesus, came out of, you know, bits and pieces. And we also know that lots of them have been fucked with changed by followers who want to make sure people understood that this is what he really meant. But, um, you go to the Sermon on the Mount and you can get a core. And if you strip it all down, and if we could see it in the original Aramaic, you find that it's not that different from the core of Hinduism or Buddhism. It all springs from the same soil. Anyway, he also was big on keeping your faith to yourself, right? Let your faith be something people see in action, not hear about. See it demonstrated with crosses and loud prayers. And the whole thing about the Lord's Prayer came about because his disciples wanted him to teach them how to pray. And so they asked him, you know, will you teach us how to pray? And as I was on my way out, how I wrote music changed and I started adapting more of the actual words that I thought Jesus might have said. And I think some of this is my problem is that I was taking the things that I thought he said way more seriously and I really had a problem with all of the self-righteousness. I didn't see my own necessarily, of course. But I felt like we were all more like Pharisees than we were like Jesus. So. And that opinion hasn't changed much. But here's my adaptation of the Lord's Prayer. Teach me how to pray. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Father in heaven. Holy. kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us And 
Deliver us from temptation's snare And protect us from the evil one O oh, Father, in heaven hear our prayer Which of course is prayed in secret in the closet For the kingdom, a quiet kingdom, is yours And the power is yours the glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray. bit of leftover from olden times but notice that it's it's all i need statements right it's you know it's not teach me how to oppress people who do not agree with me now you can find that too i mean i remember there's some great stuff in psalms lord smash the little ones of my enemies against the stones oh that's some, that's some ballsy prayer there i'm sorry but i have a problem with that that's right up there with my mom's favorite which is Oh, Lord, please help me find a parking space at the front of Walmart. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, I'm i glad I walked that path because it, it um, well, because I can't imagine a different one. I mean, every all of my stories, if you go back and look at my body of work as a writer, how much of it was me untangling all those knots. You go back and look at stories like um, uh, that old time religion or... Uh, east of Eden and just a bit south. Uh, even my If Dragons Mass Eve be cold and clear. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of it worked out on the Psalms of Isaac as you look at the what happens when you get a clash going between a, zealot, a zealous religion built on, um, on vengeance and vendetta um, and, and a secularized use of faith with the Androphrancines to try and protect humanity from itself i mean the whole the whole series the psalms of isaac i mean i'm i mean the boy the the robot who doesn't want to become human um that's kind of me uh because i was a programmed little robot but um what now well i think i'm going to close out i think that uh i think i said what i wanted to say um I'll do this one, this last one. This is, um, again, towards the end of my songwriting. My, it's funny. People pick. People pick the Jesus they want. Uh, some of us, we recognize that Jesus was a person of color who was murdered by an alliance between law enforcement and the religious right for the things that he was saying. Pretty simple. For others, he's a gun-toting, flag-waving American patriot who loves America. So much that he died for her sins. Except that we ain't, some of those sins ain't sins we're going to talk about or believe in or have taught in our schools. Because Jesus died for him. Why are we going to talk about it? Right? Anyway. I, uh, this is a, uh, this is one of those, this is the last uh, Christian song I wrote. And, um, it's about a woman that nobody should have loved or talked to because of the way she lived her life and the very way she was born. Sound familiar? I walk alone This winding path We all believe but never say It's just best that way And should we pass I look away I cannot bear the glares of shame and scorn another day. No one ever dreams their life to be a hollow hell. But oh, sometimes it seems that I need more than Jacob's well to quench my thirst. Day sun, a 
I scorch the earth And like my soul it looks so dusty, dry and desolate Around the bend He caught my eye At the well a rabbi waiting by the looks of it And he stood and turned toward me then my heart began to sink Then he smiled as he approached And asked me for a drink Which is something forbidden And he spoke to me Like I was reading someone and he looked at me like I was really there and in his living eyes I saw a well from which I could not draw without falling in falling in and all my shame all the mud in my heart falling Washed away the water of his words. All the holy men I'd met before called me half breed, called me whore, but oh, not him. Because Jesus actually believes, behaves better than all the people in his churches. Oh, not him. I tried to hide who I was. Behind my camouflage of questions and my sharpened tongue, they were brushed aside. And with each reply, I saw he knew and loved me, even with the things I'd done. On that day, he asked a drink. How could I ever know? Every answer I could seek was found in him, and he alone could quench my thirst. And he spoke to me like I was really someone. He looked at me. I was really there In his living eyes I saw A well from which I could not draw Without falling in Falling in All my shame All the mud and mire I'd fallen into Was washed away By the water of his word Men I'd met before and called me half breed, called me whore, but oh, not him. Oh, not him. I left my bucket too well. I would not need it anymore. There are so many I must tell. I met the Lord You know today I met the Lord And he speaks to me Like I am really someone And he looks at me Like I am really there And all my shame All the mud and mire that I fall into Is washed away by the water his words, and in his living eyes I see a well that waits for you and me, all of these wells that are inside of us already. That's why Buddha, Jesus, Lao Tzu, all these folks that are pointing at the same moon keep telling us the same fucking thing over and over. Sam Harris says it in his book, Waking Up. Robert Saltzman says it in The Ten Thousand Things. Uh, you get a Catholic Indian version of it. And Anthony DeMello's awareness, it's out there everywhere because 
It's inside of us. The acceptance isn't coming from somebody we met at a well. It's coming from inside of us. When we realize we can drop the rock and we can drink the same water everyone else is drinking. He speaks to me like I'm really someone. He looks at me like I fall into is washed away by the water of its words and in his living eyes I see a well that waits for you and me to come and drink come and drink come and drink come Inside you and me and everyone else, there's plenty of living water. It's where we find our stories, our songs, our direction, our solutions. Come, drink. there's a hole in the bottom of the me. Come and drink. Well, oh, hey, thanks, Keith. Thank you for coming out for Trailer Boy Church today. I uh, isn't it great. You don't have to leave your home. I didn't even get dressed for it. I wore my robe. But uh, happy, uh, happy Sunday. It's been a great weekend so far. I hope you have a great weekend. And um, yeah, I'm going to set this. I think I'll set this one to public and see if this one's uh, maybe a good test model for the YouTube expansion. Have a fantastic day.